Hello everyone. Welcome to Canalize demonstration at DEF CON Car Hacking Village 2022. A little bit of quick acknowledgement before we go into the talk. Many of the images used here are not created by me and definitely the credit goes to the owners of those images. And all these views or opinions are from my learnings of car hacking and Canalize team learnings of car hacking. We apologize if we miscommunicate uh, any information. And also using this tool, you can only control certain functions of the vehicle depending upon the hardware you're using and how those functions are implemented in the vehicle, not the entire vehicle. This is not like a Swiss Army tool of doing everything in one click. No, it's nothing like that. And a little bit of shameless promotion about me. My name is Karthik Lade, and I'm currently working as an IoT uh, security researcher at Pia2. I love automotive and IoT security, breaking things and uh, trying to do as much as I can. And I've been a speaker at conferences such as uh, Black at Asia Arsenal uh, last year in Asia. And the Cocoon, uh, ASRJ track, Cocoon is a conference which happens in India. Uh, ASRJ has a track in that. And CSAD's conference and uh, besides Delhi Kayaking Village. And apart from this work stuff, I'm an absolute community lover and volunteer. I work uh, with the CSAD's community, which is a completely open source community and a free conference for anyone who is interested to learn. And I'm an open source contributor along with these tools, whatever I make, uh, the content which I make around blogs and uh, the tools and all, all are completely open sourced. Uh, and yeah, I love watching Doraemon. Yeah, some people say I'm still a kid. Yeah, I'm a kid. If you have Doraemon, please give it to me. I would love to see the episodes which I don't know. And generally, I go to hill stations or something to do this thing. Uh, currently, I'm working on uh, a new uh, IoT security audit platform called IoT uh, Auditor from my company. So that's about me. And uh, I want to introduce my friend Rahul, who unfortunately, due to circumstances, he couldn't be here uh, for the recording. And he's currently working as a digital specialist engineer at Infosys. He's the code guy. <laughs> so generally, it happens is like I code it and I give it to him. He cleans the code and he scolds me like writing a bad code. But yeah, my code works. So I still defend myself. He is absolute uh, open source contributor like me. He also uh, did level up a lot of libraries. Uh, I think, I believe he worked on making Node MCU, how can it be used in IoT automated projects and all. He's a lot passionate about robotics and mechatronics and he thinks a lot, thinks a lot, a lot of lot. So that's about us. So the main uh, point around of this whole tool is on Canvas. So if we see why the industry needs Canvas and why we need a lot of Canvas in, in vehicle uh, networks or in vehicle in vehicles, uh, if you can see the... Uh, um, vehicle here in the top thing so there are a lot of components uh, so what happened is car manufacturers or vehicle manufacturers when they started adding more and more actuators or sensors they want to make a closed loop feedback based centralized network inside it so each one can uh, talk to each other and make the whole vehicle go forward uh, or uh, make certain functions they had to make sure that each and every component is connected with each other so if you keep going like this, it literally makes a haywire of wiring and also it creates a lot of uh, drag because of those wires and obviously the fuel efficiency and all goes slow. So they had to come up with a new uh, age protocol in 1980s where you can handle all the data in a very good centralized fashion and you don't have to drop the packets also. Imagine you want to slam the brakes, but it is getting dropped because of a lot of traffic in the network. That is not also supposed to happen. So engineers at Bosch came up with Canvas uh, where, uh, like you see, it uh, it is a single line. It actually connects all the components in your vehicle issues and all the stuff, uh, and, well, uh, issues basically. Uh, and sub actuators and sensors will connect with issues and all. Uh, but uh, the main um, point here is like, you just remote all the wiring and going on single bus. Nevertheless, it also came with few drawbacks such as lack of encryption and the lack of authentication while sending these things and it's another way if we see it works morally on centralized fashion so everybody is literally trusting every other packet which is flowing in the bus so this actually opened up to a lot sort of frame attacks and protocol attacks uh, where you actually do this and all we our tool is more focused on the frame attacks so if you see can also uh, this uh, has a carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance which actually makes sure none of the packets are getting dropped and obviously there are many other protocols like uh, uh, can ft uh, and the bus and all flex ray and all this automotive internet at all just can is one of them and yeah it is one of the efficient ways because uh, it has csma slash ca and also differential signaling 
basically to resist to the noises and uh, get this thing. The wire which we are seeing in the previous slide, it's just like a single wire, a twisted pair of wire which goes of can high and can low and flows around through all the issues in the vehicle and all. Theoretically, can also can transmit up to one Mbit per second, but uh, low speed cans go up to 125 kilo kbps. So that is there. And if you see uh, from an eagle point of view, from a top point of view about a can packet, you can see something called arbitration ID, which actually makes sure which packet has to go print and control field uh, and data field, data field which contains the exact data. So uh in a very simple piece of cake point of view if you know uh, what arbitration id and what data is actually making uh, a certain function to go on in this case a certain function can be a indication or a turn your steering nowadays many of these things are happening drive by wire instructions so if you steer your turning it might be happening on a canvas uh, any canvas uh, it doesn't depend like everybody should be having canvases because modern architectures have multiple canvas uh, networks also so uh, basically if you know the exact packet and the data you can uh, do a lot of stuff but in order to get that exact packet and data and uh, standard can format is 500 kbps so for that they you get a lot and lots of packets so manually reversing all of them is a uh, very uh, hectic process. So this is happening for me when I was participating in different CTFs, especially car hacking village CTFs. I was finding it very hard to uh, go through each packet and see uh, the traditional way, which we all know is like halving them each, half it, replay it to see if your action is actually happening or not, and then do according to that. But I wanted to come up with some kind of tool which will help me you know, which will automatically say me, okay, these are the packets which happened in this specific time frame, which are not happening in general time frame. That is one thing. And uh, well, I was thinking, uh, you know, a lot of this canvas attacks and all this after I joined, I started my uh, journey uh, job, uh, real corporate uh, job and all. A lot of the attack vectors uh, while I was working in IoT security and automotive, they are like, uh, you know, um, morely towards hardware based. You have to have a hardware connection with that. So I was thinking, uh, is there any way I can uh, put a remote thing using this tool? Because this now has in my mind, uh, you know, uh, the automatic filtering thing. And also it has, uh, uh, it can easily filter the packets and all. So now I wanted to keep it into a, a remote Raspberry Pi. So this is the initial layout, which I was having in the mind, obviously apart from this uh, Telegram bot. Uh, so my idea was to uh, put a hardware, whatever hardware I'm available and keep it in a Raspberry Pi, canalize inside a Raspberry Pi, and uh, actually put it inside a vehicle uh, through wired connection, like a hardware backdoor, hardware implant backdoor and all. But later we found a way, uh, we came to know that you can actually send uh, to, uh, using uh, Telegram bots, you can actually send data uh, to Telegram and uh, get this thing and all. So that was one thing, uh, Telegram bots using, uh, we can also do this thing. But also I realized, uh, you know, after this, while uh, I was while I was working on few projects or related to electric vehicle, collecting logs of multiple multiple logs every day, day in and day out, and filtering them and making sure everything is in place is also very hectic. So now I want something uh, you know uh, where I can put all my logs like sessions. Like if you know the Bob suit style, they can actually collect all the sessions, all the requests which are going in and out from the uh, servers, proxy servers, and collect everything in one place. So I wanted to have this thing. So this is uh, what uh, Canalize was started. So I, if I say, along with my friend, we were actually trying to uh, first implement automatic filtering way by comparing with two files. That was the previous version. Then we came to know, you know, we can uh, use something called hash maps and we can actually make sure that it goes automatically. So you can directly get the payload, refined payload outside. And yeah, I was always uh, thinking out with how can we do over the internet, uh, like hardware implant, and how can we have a session based thing where you can collect all the dump and all. So, uh, and also a few assumptions here. Uh, if you are using this tool, we assume that you have the required hardware and also you're in the same bus where you can log the data and or log the intended action, which you want to find out the packets for and make sure your power supply is taken care. A lot of times I had to uh, redo it uh, testing and all because the power supply, which I was giving is not stable. And also if you're using it as a remote hardware implant, like shown in the previous slide, uh, please make sure you have that hardware has uh, a remote connectivity thing and all. So why canalize? There are a lot of uh, things happening. A SCAPI is there. A SCAPI has a, a Python can support, can support and all, and can is there. But uh, 
Canalize is more on Python can library and it is completely malleable code, all the things which we have implemented using an IDE, which is coming. Uh, if you can see, there's three main stuff, a smart scan, IDE, and connect to Telegram. Basically, connect to Telegram works on top of IDE, which is the uh, passing commands to HTTP API key. But uh, all the functions which actually this tool works and all, it happened uh, through uh, Python can library. So the code is pretty much malleable. You can add your own functions and you can do it and you can be using it remotely also. And uh, there's one more important thing which we added while we realized while uh, testing of this tool that, you know, there should be some kind of seamless transfer. Importing a log file into it uh, and then replaying it and recording it and all is okay. But what if uh, wherever in whichever session you are creating a log file or a, a basically creating a particular data frame, set of data, and you can seamlessly uh, pull it to another session and all. Uh, that also we want to influence and this happened. And it's a command line based tool. I personally like command line based tools more than GUI. And yeah, sometimes I hate it, but yeah, I love it overall. <laughs> so that is there. So we wanted to uh, get all of this. Now you might be having the questions like, you know, Karthik, whatever your tool is nice and okay, but how exactly this happens in your tool? So for that, let's see the process flow a little bit. And like I was explaining, uh, let's say uh, the main uh, concept here is like you make two files, which you can compare with each other. And then uh, you actually do the whole, use the whole tool to automatically do the stuff. So let's say uh, the first file as source file and imagine you are on a road or you're riding your vehicle and it is at some 40 kilometers per hour speed and suddenly uh, do this is not in steady state, even though you are running at 40 kilometers per hour steady state, but there is a lot of data, uh, huge amounts of data has going through in your canvas networks and doing all these things. But you apply a break or you give a signal or you turn the steering or do something which can actually be controlled on by CAN packets. Uh, the chance of that packet compared to all the packets which are having on the bus is less than 5%. So uh, what we do here in this tool, particularly while we are using this tool, is we create a source file which actually contains uh, general traffic and not contains the internet packets. Let's say my internet packets right now is to open the doors and or to op uh, put on light and left indications. So we create a source file first. And then we uh, record an action file, which we create uh, through smart scan or ID, which we can in smart scan, it is automatically done. You just need to press single buttons, click, click, click. But in ID, you can actually pass commands to uh, do this stuff. So that uh, also you can do uh, with action. What we basically do is like in source, basically you don't have the intended action. In uh, um, action, you have actually the intended packets are present for what you're trying to do. So then uh, what now? Now you have source, which contains noise. Let's call it as noise. It's a general traffic in the bus. And now you can have action file where you have intended packs of action, definitely with the source. And also I have here noise star. Uh, why noise star is like, there might be additional packets which are generated in time of uh, your action happening. It might be affecting, it might not be affecting, it might be different stuff. For example, if you are slamming the brakes, uh, two packets are being generated, one to send it to the actuator, brake actuator, brake lets and all to actually slam the brake and also at the same time indicators on your infotainment hub or the dashboard has to show up that you know brakes are slammed and all. So it, this might be in your interest, this might not be in your interest. So generally, if we keep only filtering this uh, source and attack file or the action files, they basically have extra packets which you might want, don't want to know. But uh, using smart scan and uh, ID, you can actually filter into that level also. Don't worry, we'll see it in a detailed demonstration and coming forward. Yeah. And uh, there is a payload. Once we payload, uh, what happens is like action minus source, obviously. And noise star, you can repent that we will see. So if we put into a Venn diagram point of view, this is something you want. This is the niche ice cream you want, uh, which you are interested. And it might be coming with a noise and it might be having some overlapping with source. So all these things and all. So now you're saying like, okay, uh, Karthik, we have a source file. You can have an action file and you want to create a payload file. You're just doing uh, some kind of filtering, picking up packets and all and doing this. But what if you have multiple action files you want to record? That also you can do uh, with smart scan along with the ID. Smart scan, you just need to do it in a recursive way. Keep telling it now you have to collect the action file, collect the action file. It will test all the things and uh, you, it can analyze between them and create a payload for you. And what if you have multiple source files? Since SmartScan does the functions recursively, 
it actually records all the packets recursively uh, without you you saying it continuously checks the bus uh, compares between two files and does thing and uh, uh, you can generate payloads also but what if you have multiple source files you want to record multiple action files you want to record and you want to create multiple payload files that you can do in ide what in IDE we are using is we are leveraging the power of an IDE environment which you get and uh, Python can and also the uh, Pandas database for advanced and faster filtering and also SQL commands because a lot of people know SQL nowadays we thought like you know instead of uh, doing it uh, by hand why don't we use SQL uh, power of SQL here and uh, basically uh, help out people uh, in making the process easy run sql command to treat that uh, logs you created as tables and run sql commands and then get out of these things well uh, if you are interested on how this exact code works i have a few uh, you know main functions of it the collect signal function so basically what happens here is like whenever you enter into the smart scan mode it starts uh, this function collect signal uh, and where it uh, collects all the data which is appearing on the particular communication interface you have mentioned in the settings for example if i'm using IC simulator in this case then my interface would be virtual can zero and yeah uh, the socket can and the channel is virtual can zero and the interface with the socket can it simply picks up all the data and it quickly converts into a hash map and uh, whenever you go to uh, noise uh, you can call it as instead of signal you can call it as source and whenever you go to noise uh, it will also create a uh, check with uh, the hash map or whatever the packets it is coming in the noise uh, file whether it is present in action or not so here the assumption is like if it is present in both files probably that is not your internet packet if it is not present then yeah that is your internet packet so we are actually checking the whole data also we are not uh, uh, you know uh, simply checking the ids we are also checking the data so it uh, comes out that way and yeah it's enough of about myself the process flow and uh, the whole uh, you know the code flow and all let's actually uh, see the real uh, meet here the demo and for this demo i'm using IC simulator obviously i don't own a car and i don't want to break anyone's car and nobody is seriously guys nobody believes me in giving their card so yeah it's a good thing but it's also a bad thing because i was not able to get a uh, reverse uh, real demo to this uh, talk I still regret that but yeah when if you're doing it in your car then please make sure you don't break your car if you're using your friends cars or your colleagues or some well wishers cars please make sure you have necessary permissions to all this stuff i'm currently focusing on uh, the ic simulator so guys welcome to my vm lab uh here i want to go with the vm um, for demonstration purposes and i just want to put a quick show i'm using three here the ic simulator and can util support and the canalize so once you git cloned uh, your uh, versions and you installed all the required uh, things you can actually uh, do this cd into the canalize and it should be something like this so this means like you have all the thing i have already listed uh, all the requirements in the thing whatever we are using inside is so please uh, run it using pip3 minus r in requirements.txt and uh, it will do it, all the stuff for you uh, automatically and then uh, use sudo i recommend sudo because we are doing a lot of file uh, saving and all stuff and uh, you can do sudo uh, python3 canalize interface dot five so yeah this is how canalize looks when you open it so before going uh, to the options i want to quickly show you about the settings uh, there are three settings here you can set up your communication channel communication interface and api token since it is uh, developed on top of python can or in fact using python can thanks to all the developers who contributed to python can who made our lives easy in developing this tool uh, you can also use all the channels and interfaces the python can use supports so i want to check uh, what channel it has yes it has uh, weekend zero which is i'm running like you guessed ic simulator here it also runs on weekend zero and the interface is socket can and yeah so now uh, let me just uh, start with the smart scan where we said uh, you know it will automatically do the stuff so yeah so uh, here there are a few options you can play save and you can quit from this thing and also you can press the space bar and start giving the signals and all and yeah if you don't like these key bindings you can change it anytime in a completely open source so you can uh, do it on your own it's a very easy code so but 
till the time we are on a conversation, the smarts can collect noise uh, function actually silently recording all the packets which are going back uh, in the VCAN zero. So when I just hit spacebar and I give the right and left signal just for easy purposes, and I push B, it directly gave me the packets. So yeah, why it immediately give the packets? <laughs> Am I doing something bad here? No, no, no. So be just because we are having uh, conversed in a lot of time, it quickly uh, found out, you know, using hash map, uh, it, these are the only packets which changed while here. And you, you can actually uh, do one more thing. We can uh, go this time faster and do to see how it does in live. I'll do this and I'll do, and I'll do this and I'll do this. Yeah. So if you can see there's 244, if you know IC simulator 244 is this for signal indication, but because it does a hash map, it is constantly filtering all the stuff automatically. And uh, you can save these uh, logs. Yeah, it should uh, give back to two packets. For example, if you're not getting that filtered uh, thing, you can do it recursively once again to get the exact same packets and all. You can actually save this file, then uh, press S to save. And then let me say, uh, car hacking village uh, 2022 dot lock and it will save in that particular folder in that let me just open my tools and canalize yeah if you can see here it just um, mentioned the lock same files uh, along with the timestamp and all okay sorry for my ui yeah you can see uh, it also took the timestamp and all the ids and all so that is uh, about uh, the smart scan but what if you don't want to do it automatically, but you actually want to uh, do it in a smart IDE way. For that, you can use Canalize IDE. So IDE, it's like uh, any other Python IDE. You can uh, please edit this out. Uh, yeah. So uh, IDE is more like any other uh, Python based IDE. You here you have like command line interface. You can set pass some functions. There are a set of predefined functions which we will see now, and uh, you can do that and all. So let me just uh, record a few variables here, and after that I'll uh, make a new file noise, and I'll do uh, use the scan function which is predefined here, and I'll mention you know collect uh, all the packets from weekend zero um, channel and then do it for 60 seconds and yeah so what's happening now is uh the functions which we use to define the scan function it is uh in, by using python can it is collecting all the packets which are happening in the bus and keeping it to a python data frame uh basically uh pandas has, uh, pandas data frame so that we can go forward and use it much easier and all let me let it complete for one minute and then we will do the same thing for action but that time we'll open the doors close the doors and give indication in a particular sequence to see whether it is able to collect the same sequence back and filter it exactly so let's just wait till the scan completes basically if the more you scan for noise now the more a fault uh reduced your thing because it has a big uh, directory of all the messages which you are not interested or you're, that is not ex exactly happening in your intended action time period. So it's good to have a good filter so that you get much fine results. Yeah, now we've completed. Let's do the same. Let's make another action file and uh, you know, scan uh, it for particular 60 seconds. We can zero. And then yeah, do it for 60 seconds. But this time, at the same time, uh, what we do is we'll open the right indication and open the doors and do the left indication and close all the doors and open all the doors back and close all the doors. Yeah, so technically speaking, all these packets should be inside the action uh, file which we are creating uh, or the variable where we are storing all these packets and uh, we should be able to uh, compare the noise and remove the noise from this action. 
and if there are any extra things uh, we can also do that since uh, like i mentioned we are using sql here so it's simply like a table you just run your queries uh, inside this id itself here itself and then you know uh, you actually uh, get to remove all the uh, you know noise stuff you have let's just wait till it completes it is now also like you remember it is considering a lot of noise like noise star and all yeah and let's see how much packets it actually uh, collected in this format or in this time period yeah it uh, collected around 4643 packets and uh, in action it collected around 4700 packets yeah you can also increase the speed uh, and see you can do this for more uh, just for demonstration purposes here i'm doing it very for making it very simple so yeah that is there and uh, let's just uh, filter them so filtering is very simple using sql commands just run an sql command here consider these two as tables and i want to select uh, id comma data from let's say action obviously action and I just don't want uh, which are there in the noise file except you know select id comma data from noise so that's it and it literally skimmed through all 4,700 packets and it uh, defined or uh, like reduced it to very less number of packets. Let's see how many. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, 244 should come here also. But since we recorded for a large amount of time, it didn't appear here. So yeah, it literally filtered down to six packets. This is good enough if you want to do it manually, if you want to send each packet and check and all. But this is not good enough if you want to store this log in a separate way. So for that, you. Uh, this is actually present whatever happening here these uh, packets and all these are actually present in the files which we created so we can actually use the sql to match with the same and to color the exact timestamp and channel which are corresponding to this id and data for that uh, let me just uh, do something like um, you know uh, payload let me create a payload which is sql of um, select A dot timestamp for my A dot channel for my A dot ID for my A dot data from action. Obviously, it will be only available action, action A. And I want to use this SQL function inner join and uh, inner join to filter. Okay. In a joint to filter, um, let's call it as B on the junction A dot ID is equal to B dot ID and A dot data is equal to B dot data. So this would be the command to actually pack it back into this thing. Okay, there's some issue here. Let's see, uh, only conversion. Okay, okay, okay. So let's do something called load and actually pass the string into this. Let me just copy paste here. So now we, we can verify this that this is the uh, thing and let's just load it into a payload. Payload is equal to SQL of load. Okay, just give me a second. I want to see what what happened here.
okay i made a small error instead of filter i'm just saying peter so let me just run that once again Let's just see what is on load. Yeah, filter. So, uh, okay. uh, load is equal to select a dot timestamp a dot channel comma a dot id comma a dot data one action a in a join filter b on a dot id is equal to b dot id and a dot data is equal to b dot data oh i don't think this works yeah i have to pass it in a string very sorry guys very sorry i'm killing your time okay now let's see load yeah and uh, now let's do payload is equal to sql of load yeah now it just packed everything into the one payload file lot of errors man lot of errors <laughs> i'm lot of errors so yeah now you can see uh it packed with uh, all the things and uh here you can see what order it came the it also packed into those stuff here you might miss the order a little bit because it is on different uh, sorting algorithm but when you pack it back according to timestamp it will adjust back all the things and now you can actually uh, play this uh, payload thing which we created and to see if it is happening on the same so we'll verify that so same thing like the save thing and all a scan function like and all uh, so we can zero and yeah just to payload Please don't make a string errors like I did. I am very ashamed of it now. So if you see, it actually does in the same order which we recorded, which make confirms that this tool will not reverse your uh, can priority inversion and all those things. It doesn't do all the kind of the thing. It actually works on time stamp basis, so it does like that same. I close the doors. Yeah. So it completed playing all these things. So this is one thing, but we it is a very small thing now right now we just created two uh, actions and one action and uh, one noise and hardly 4700 packets are there and only six uh, seven uh, you know payload packets are there in seven uh, all these things and uh, but yeah if you might have a question like you know why it is giving more than what it is supposed to be here so when it checks this is that noise star i'm saying uh, it checks uh, that and then it sometimes it gives you you can actually particularly remove something uh, from this thing and you can also do that uh, for example if i want to remove 19p so i can uh, do something like uh, you know payload it's on filter so let's just do a filter one which is uh, you know um, let's say sql of Select all from filter. Here. In fact, you can run payload also here. You don't need to worry about that. Where ID is not equal to 19P. and just close this and run it so if you see filter one uh, will actually give only the packets which you want so in this way uh, like I was explaining you can create multiple files payload files also if you want and all 
But even though it is very small, but we created a lot of stuff. We ran a lot of commands. We did some blenders. I did some blenders. So yeah, what if I want to have this whole session exported? In ID, you can also do that. For example, when you're doing in print investment projects, you work, you're working on assessing how good the break function is, but you want to extract, uh, export all the things. Uh, you can simply put export and just type the name. I want to do uh, CHV22 like I did. Um, no, uh, let's just add another variable talk and yeah, that's it. I just pass it as a string and I put enter. Right now it is exporting every single command and everything. Uh, it did complete it also very fast. So all the things which we did till now are actually uh, done here. So let me just open that. You can see here, there's a CHV22 uh, uh, talk folder here. There we have logs, all the logs which we created, filter one noise, action payload, even though you don't convert into logs, because whenever you play it back, actually makes in tables into log. You can also, uh, for example, the filter, which we never used it anywhere. So it can also convert all your things into a CSV and it can save it to you. If I don't have Excel here, so it doesn't show it well. You can also do this in a CSV way. And also here we use some kind of meta language kind of stuff, the dot class. So you can actually see all the commands which we ran till now along with all the blunders and stuff. And also, if you uh, see here, we also have this thing, um, the data.clice. What data.clice actually does is, like I was explaining, canalize ID, you can do seamless data transfer. So right now I exported this logs. So I have this, uh, my payload and uh, filter one and all. So if I want this into any other project, I don't need to copy paste, copy paste and all. I can simply call or import from this particular uh, directory this, this particular uh, payload file or log file, it is there, you just import that. So we'll do that. Uh, let me just uh, exit from here and uh, do it into a new thing where I want to show, uh, you know, uh, do, do we have this stuff or not? So let's say, um, let's try for filter one dot log. So let's see if we have filter one dot log or something, uh, you know, filter one variable at least. No, it's not dependent, it's completely remote. But I can uh, simply say, uh, you know, just uh, get filter one from here. In fact, I can give uh, another name, CHV uh, is equal to, yeah. Okay. Let's just, yeah, filter one. You just need to copy paste it and then, yeah. Okay, again, blenders, a lot of blenders today. <laughs> yeah, filter one, you just got the same thing. You can actually do the same thing here, like we did same ID. So yeah, you can uh, play it, we can zero, comma, filter one. And it will just get the thing, signals. So once it is done, yeah, you got the, Graph one to me, yeah, left one also, both of it's done. So this is how easy it is using Canalize ID and recording your projects and doing all the stuff. Yeah, let's also check out the Telegram part. So to do that, I'll quickly open my Telegram. I have also created a bot uh, known as Canalize bot and I have this uh, API token. I'll just copy it here and I'll go to settings. And I'll put my API token here. That's it. So if I want to check, I can go back and check. Yeah, it's the same one which I just used. And I went back and I want to go to initialize this bot. Yeah, this bot is initialized. Let me just connect to Telegram. Okay. Let me just start this. Yeah, just connect to Telegram. Yeah, it gives a high, that means it has binded with your bot. And uh, what happens here is like, we can do all the same stuff which we did till now. Uh, and if you remember, we have multiple uh, files here, so we can actually use them and uh, do the same, run the same commands uh, here. We'll run the same commands and to see, but we'll just uh, restrict it to 10 seconds like that. So let's do that. So let me just uh, collect the noise once again for uh, 10 seconds. 
So whenever a uh, Telegram while you're using to Telegram bot, uh, please make sure your bot is initialized and all. And also when the command uh, execution is completed, it will give you a thumbs up symbol, which indicates that you know your command is uh, perfectly executed. Otherwise, it puts you an error. And also, let's uh, do one more action file. This time, let me do the action file for 30 seconds. I want to do something. So I want to open only two doors here. And then, yeah, let's see how that works for us. I'm opening the first door and giving the right signal. And I'm opening the second door and then giving the left signal. And I'm literally closing all the doors. So let's see uh, how it happens in this. So same commands like IDE, uh, like I discussed, it uh, simply uses uh, the whole commands from IDE to do here. So it filters now, like we did. Here also you can see it says message received and output is code and all. Yeah. And also you can load it back into a payload. Okay, again, the same error because, yeah, there's no fighter, there is only filter. Yeah, it's done. And, you know, we can actually uh, do this also. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah, it is done. And this. Oh, I'm literally creating the load file from the load and I'm playing back the payload file. Okay. If you, here you can see uh, it is following the same order of opening a door and then giving the signal and then opening the other door. In a few seconds, it will do that too and close all the doors too. And also here, the condition is like, you know, uh, the files which we have created, we should also be having all the packets we wanted. That is also a condition here. So if it doesn't have, because of the time frame we used uh, 30 seconds and 10 seconds, if it doesn't actually was able to uh, filter it out, then you won't be able to get hard. But yeah, it got here, it's very late. So yeah, that is uh, this thing like there, you can also export here also, you can just send, uh, you know, export command, it will save it in your uh, thing. So tele uh, CHV, I'll just put that and yeah. Once it is done, it just gives an export time. So whenever you collect back your device, uh, you can actually see that it is also there. Yeah. yeah. Tele talk CHV, like the same format, all the commands, logs we have used, and the payloads we created, and the filter CSV, everything is same. So this is the demo of the canalize IDE. Uh, Robert, please cut it here. I will stop sharing my screen and uh, I'll do it once again with my slides. So I hope you loved our uh, demonstration tool demo and all. I did make a lot of blunders in uh, passing the commands and all. I hope you can forgive me for that. And yeah, that is about ID. I believe we, uh, the team canalized, believe you loved this and all. And also, since we are saying uh, these things and a lot of stuff which needs improvement, uh, one of the things is uh, the terminal UI. We are planning to uh, improve the UI so it makes more user friendly, both in ID and smart scan way. And also, I know how powerful we know how powerful Scappy is, and we will, are looking ways to implement uh, or like uh, get Scappy also in the ID so that it helps you uh, doing a lot of advanced stuff also. Further, I'm not sure right now because I want to master it first and then I want to pull it in this tool. Uh, otherwise, it just ends up like any other tool which is available. So I want to solve something there. Yeah, so that is my future plans. 
and like we are discussing this tool is completely open source and made for community people who want to get started with kayaking or uh, who wants to make uh, the process more enjoyable and easy so if you have any idea please don't forget to contribute to the tool it's just in the github it's just a pull request away so please do try it your tinkering stuff and all and uh, finally i would like to thank my mentor and my company prashant kv and my company pair too for supporting me in this and also i would like to thank rahul in this moment for being with me in all this days and actually running through all my bad cold pitch runs by the way <laughs> and all these things and also thanks to whole kayaking village team who pulled it out uh, we know how much it is hard to uh, run a conference and turn this thing and thanks to defcon usa thank you all thank you for listening to our talk and supporting us thank you